போராடுவோம் 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 இந்தியர்களுக்கு பாடுபடுவோம் போராடுவோம் போராடுவோம் கோப்பிங்கோ வாழ்க கோப்பிங்கோ வெற்றி கோப்பிங்கோ வாழ்க
citizens of Penang remain unresolved. In fact, they are getting worse because of the development policies of the government. We do not seem to have the voice within government to take care of the interest of the Indian citizens of Penang. There is no voice. Out of that need arises this COPINGO, Coalition of Penang Indian NGOs. We want for our voice to be heard. We want for the state government to include in its policies, they say inclusive, inclusive, inclusive. Here, we tell you, include these solutions into your policies, into your plans. Everything you touch in relation to the lives of the Indian poor, from the time they are born, they go to school, look for jobs, look for a livelihood, die, pass away. It's all problems all the way. So who's going to be addressing this? The Indian poor community does not have the resources. The state must consider it its responsibility to address these issues. So far, it is totally ignoring and wishing the problem away. These problems do not go away by themselves unless there is state intervention. This is what Kopingo asks for. We need state intervention. First, when the estate workers are evicted from their former homes, the state government should replace them, should compensate them with another house in the vicinity of the development that is causing their eviction. They should be compensated with a house. In Batukawan, they are com compensating with 4,200 ringgits. Come on, Chief Minister Limbo Aneng. Do you build houses for 4,200 ringgits? Come on, Chief Minister Limbo Aneng. Do you build houses for 4,200 ringgits? What justice is this? What justice is this? So let's have some reason in all this. So we call upon the state government. One for one, one family you evict, you give them one house. This has to become state, this has to become part of the state development policy. In relation to the displacement of estate workers who have contributed greatly to the development of this state. That's our first demand. Second demand, we see foundational education, primary school education is suffering greatly because of the condition of primary Tamil schools. We are saying the state government should now, without any further delay, incorporate into its policies plans to provide lands, adequate land, suitable land for all Tamil schools in the state that are crying out for land now. The state government should stop politicking, saying we will give land for secondary school. That is all just to deflect the attention away from the real issue that they are not giving land for the Tamil primary schools. Inclusiveness means all these young children who are being compromised because they don't have proper facilities needs now to be included clearly into the state's development plans. Chief Minister Lim Guaneng is the head of the religious affairs, non-Islamic religious affairs exco committee. As such, he has responsibility for the religious affairs of the non-Muslims of the state of Penang. To him, we say, there are temples, places of Hindu worship that today are facing destruction because they don't sit on their own land. They need all to be addressed in a square manner. They need to be given adequate land so that they don't face this threat of being destroyed in time. There are burial grounds in sorry state throughout the state of Penang for the Hindus, for the Indians. And this needs to be addressed. The one gas fired crematorium in Batulanchang needs to be, this is our fourth demand. The Batulanchang Hindu crematorium needs to be taken over by the state government and run and provided as a service to the Hindus, to the Indians of Penang. 
or a fifth demand is this. If you go into any one of these estates where you have these poor Indian communities, you will find cows, maybe goats. Those are all indications of livelihood of those people. When the state development policies demolishes the, 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 their, their places of residence, all these cow pens and goat pens are demolished alongside, destroying their livelihood. Our fifth demand is this. The state government should develop appropriate plans to recite, to relocate and provide adequate replacement facilities for these agricultural activities by these poor Indians. They are poor. Don't make them poorer by your policies. Please, Chief Minister Lim Guan Eng, I'm shouting my throat out here. I don't know if you can hear. I don't know if you have the capacity to hear. But these people are poor people. Don't make them poorer by destroying their livelihood. The sixth point, the state government must employ, our sixth demand is this, the state government must employ more Indian youths into the state government and into the local councils. Today there are qualifications that exclude Indian youth from such employment. On the one hand, our Indian youth face serious unemployment, leading them into the hands of crime. Now this is a crime prevention program. This is a positive citizens productive development program. So the state government should consider this seriously and not play games with qualifications and numbers. These are our six demands. These are very reasonable demands. We have to bring it out here in this manner because there is no voice within government for all these to be to be voiced. We, we are only interested in preserving the interests of the Indian poor. The state government has a responsibility. We want them to play their role positively. This is our request.